Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Baina here. I was inspired to make the video because I got a really nice message from one of my followers on Instagram. And she just wrote, I love how effortless your style is. Everything looks so easy, breezy, yet stylish, the embodiment of Cali life. Thank you so much for that message. I feel like I'm in a place right now where I am able to understand what pieces of furniture, accessories, art are gonna work in my space and make me happy that I'm gonna like and that are worth the money. And I also really do feel confident now in picking out clothing that's gonna suit my body, that's gonna you know, kind of flatter me, that fits my lifestyle, that kind of goes along with that you know, image. And you guys know me for mostly my interior design videos, but also I have gone through a style transformation over the last two years of really like investing and learning about my style. So both of the, all of these lessons really apply to interior design and personal style. Investing in education and learning is a thousand times more important than money, okay? One of the biggest misconceptions people have about interior design is that it's all about money. It's only for rich people, and unless you have a ton of money, you cannot have great style, and nothing could honestly be further from the truth. I learned from very humble roots of going to flea markets and just learning to kind of like appreciate furniture and being willing to understand why things work is what is gonna give you the skills to make a beautiful space. If you look back at all the videos on this channel, it really is taking something that most people feel intimidated by, the subject of design, and breaking it down into common sense decorating lessons that you really, people can get very, very quickly, which I absolutely love to do. So never be afraid to experiment and make a mistake because your mistakes are a way to learn. I remember going to a flea market once and buying an oil painting that was like this bowl of fruit and very like grayed down. It was very beautiful. And when I brought it home, I realized even though it was beautiful, there was just something that I didn't love about it. But at the time, I didn't really understand why. Um, and I've now since learned that I don't really like those grayed down muted tones. You also learn from your favorites, okay? I made a recent video about this as well. But if I gather five or six favorites in my home, a piece of art, a piece of furniture, a garment, a dress, a piece of jewelry, the one thing I started to notice between all the things that I loved was that they were in these more cheerful, happy colors, I consider them. And so I kind of learned over time that, wow, the colors and the things that I'm always gravitating towards are more saturated, uh, more bright, more happy, more minimal. And so anytime I get something as beautiful as it is, that's in those muted tones, it's, I'm never going to love it. And that's how you learn. You can learn through the things that didn't work and the things that you absolutely love, okay? Um, this is extremely important when you are either choosing a place to live, whether you're renting it or buying a home, or in that first year when you first move in, okay? If you move into a space and you've got that beigey, off-white color that you do not like and you hate it, you're better off just painting it at the beginning so that your foundation is something that you can build on that you're going to love, okay? So one thing that I wish I would have done when I moved into this space, I wish I would have redid my walk-in closet. Yes, it's a rental. I have flexible landlord. I'm sure they wouldn't have cared, honestly. And now that I've been here for eight years, I absolutely don't want to do that. What I would have done is I would have painted my closet, installed a cute light fixture. It's not that hard to do any of these things. Literally takes a day. I would have ripped out the clothing rack and one dumb shelf. And I would have gone like to Ikea and done a really cute, like all those, you know, installed shelves and kind of closet system. I've been here literally for eight years. And I think that would have improved the quality of my life and like, made such a dramatic difference. That's the kind of stuff that you want to sort of do at the beginning. If there's something you need to address with the architecture that's really holding your style back, you're better off doing that at the beginning, okay, so that you have this beautiful shell to work with and then decorate. I've always loved the Saarinen dining table with the marble top. It's all about the marble top. How I know I love that is because I've saved images over the years, whether that's magazine clippings or Pinterest, and I keep seeing this table over and over and over and over and over again. I was an opportunistic shopper, so I saw things that were similar. I saw things that were available, not too expensive, that would function in the space, but I didn't have the same love that I had for the Saarinen marble top table. And guess what? I don't have any of those dining tables anymore. So. The lesson is that you actually save money over time and you're more happy with your space when you really do 
invest in those couple of things that you really love. Everything doesn't have to be a huge investment. There's always one or two things that you know you really like that if you just saved up and bought it, you would be more happy in the long run. Same with like luxury bags. They're not for everybody, but investing in a bag that you've had your eye on, you're obsessed with, you just need, I think it's a wise investment because it's something that you'll have forever, has high resale value, looks great, is classy, and you should have a few things that you really, really like. Now, a lot of people are confused about what their decorating style is. So I have a free decorating quiz. The link is in the description box. Go take that quiz. It's a very value packed quiz. And there's like Pinterest boards that they link to. It's a great place to start. Okay. So your foundational pieces are kind of like a capsule wardrobe, right? You have your base items that hold that wardrobe together. In terms of your home, the basic pieces that you would need to make that room function. So in a living room, we're talking like, okay, I need a sofa to sit on. I need a table to put a drink on. I need an accent chair, at least, you know, I need window coverings for privacy. I need a rug on the floor. Like that's five things are like foundation. You want to think of being more conscious of those purchases because they really set the tone for the overall space. Everything builds off of each other. So if you are traditional, you're probably going to be more happy getting a sofa that has those classic lines, maybe like an English roll arm sofa, than you are if you have a sofa that's mid-century modern, okay? And like the sofa is a big, a big piece in the room. It's like a big investment. And so you want to start off the right way by doing the main piece of furniture in the style that you're going to be more, more happy with. If you have to ask if something looks good, it probably does not, okay? If you ever tried something on and you're kind of like, mm, anytime we're going like this, that's usually a sign that's not working for you, okay? Um, you have to learn how to trust your intuition when it comes to style and, and give yourself some credit, okay? Because a lot of times, the common person knows, uh, I don't know, okay? You wanna look at your outfit in the mirror and when you, you wanna see what you notice first. The whole purpose of style is to enhance your beauty so that you notice you, your face, okay? Not the clothes. If you look at an outfit and immediately see the garment first, there's a, probably a pretty good chance that that item is wearing you. I remember one time I was driving down a, a main street here in Los Angeles and I saw this yellow jacket pop out of my head. And I remember turning and really like, studying her outfit it, you couldn't look away and i realized the garment is nice but it's wearing her it is not organic to her and usually when there is something that's sticking out on you and it doesn't quite feel right it's because you 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 ask that question okay could it work i got it it was only a hundred dollars or my my grandmother gave it to me i don't want to get rid of it can it work i don't know anytime you, there's something in your space that you're just not 100% on and you're just kind of like, Ugh, you should stop right there. Do not continue to build upon that piece because you're gonna end up with a room that you don't like, all right? So if that rug isn't really what your vibe is, don't choose your curtains to match it. You gotta just cut your losses and move on. So those are the five things that I've learned about style. I'd say the top main elements that make up everything that I believe about style, about interiors, and uh, yeah, if I've missed anything, please let me know below. If anything was particularly helpful, I'd love to know as well. Please subscribe for more decorating and design videos, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.